Okay, so now we have question number two from the Pure Mathematics 1 P1 IAL paper, the specimen paper. Um, <clears throat> here we're given a graph. We have a quadratic graph and a linear graph on a pair of axes. And they gave her the equation of the curve. Okay, which was y equals 2x squared plus 3x. Equation of the straight line, which is y equals a half x plus 3. In bold at the top in this question, you must show all, all steps of your working. Solutions relying on calculator technology are not acceptable. So you can't just pretend you've answered the question and write the answer down. You won't get any marks for those. You have to um, show your steps very clearly because they know that you can use your calculator to solve certain types of equations without you know, knowing exactly how to do it just by punching numbers into the calculator. So that's why they wrote this down. So to make it very clear to you that you have to show your steps in your solving of the equations. Now, so it says figure one shows a sketch of the curve with equation y equals 2x squared plus 3x and the straight line with equation y equals a half x plus 3. Okay, the line meets the curve at the points P and Q as shown. Using algebra, find the coordinates of P and the coordinates of Q. So basically we've got to find where these, this line this line and this curve intersect. So you have y equals 2x squared plus 3x and you have y equals a half x plus 3. So basically we've got to solve these equations simultaneously. I've got to find the value of x and y which is the same for both of these two equations. Okay, so to solve them, um, to solve these equations simultaneously, you can just replace the y in one equation with what it's equal to in terms of x in the other. And then you'll have just one variable. So if I, for example, write instead of this y here, I write 2x squared plus 3x instead of this y, because that's what y equals, I will have the start to my answer. So 2x squared plus 3x equals a half x plus 3. So I've replaced the y with 2x squared plus 3x. Or you can say I've made the two equations equal to each other. Okay, and that works fine if they both say y equals. Right, now I want to uh, solve this equation. Okay, so what I need to do is firstly I want to get rid of all the fractions in this equation. So I'm going to multiply every both sides of the equation by 2. So when I multiply this side by 2, I'll get 4x squared plus 6x. If I multiply this by 2, I'll get x plus 6. I multiplied by 2 to get rid of this half here. Okay, but I've got to multiply both sides of the equation by 2. Then I can see that I'm going to have some sort of quadratic equation. So I have 4x squared. I have 6x minus x, which is plus 5x. And I have plus 6 here, which I have to do 0 minus 6, which is minus 6 equals zero. So I have a quadratic equation which I can try to solve. Now let's see what the question says. All right, using algebra find the coordinates of P and the coordinates of Q. Okay, so let's see if it's possible to factorize first. If it's possible to factorize we can. If not we can use a formula or completing the square. So I need to, I'm going to put 4x squared here and I'm going to put minus 6 here. Just move this up for a little bit. Okay, so I need to find two numbers. When I multiply them, I get minus 24x squared. And when I add them, I get plus 5x. Okay, so they have to have different signs. So I think of all the ways of getting 24. Well, I have uh, 24 and 1 and 12 and 2. And I have 6 and 4. So 24 and 1, no. 6 and 2, no. Um, I have uh, 3 and 8. 3, 8 to 24, yes. Okay, so 3 times 8 is 24. Okay, they both have to have different signs. and I, So it's going to be plus 8x and minus 3x. These two numbers multiply to give you minus 24x squared and they add to give me plus 5x. So this can be factorized. I kind of um, guess that it could be factorized because it says here, um, find the coordinates of P and Q. If it's non-factorizable, they would normally write find the exact coordinates of P and Q something, you'd see the word exactly normally. So that's normally a clue to see what, that it can be factorized. 
So it can be now, let's just continue with the factorization. This is a, a method which I call the window method, which I like to use with my students. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with it, but there's other ways like splitting the middle term or guess and check. I like this method here, where I made these boxes. So now I'm gonna find the common factor from, I'm right over here, the common factor from, these, from this column. So you've got four and X as common, okay? And then you've got here, common factor is just X, okay? And then I say, okay, X times something gives me minus three X, well, that's minus three, and four X times something gives me plus eight X, well, that's plus two. So I end up with four X minus three times X plus two equals zero. Let's just confirm that, that's, 4x squared plus 8x minus 3x, that's right, minus 6, yes, okay. So we're going to have either 4x equals 3, in which case x equals 3 quarters, or x equals minus 2. All right, so we haven't quite finished yet, we we're still on part A. Okay, we got to find the coordinates of P and Q. Now P must be the one that has, um, P must be the one that has x as minus 2. And Q must be the one that has X as three quarters. Okay. As you can see here, all right, P is the one on the negative side and Q is the one on the positive side. So this is minus two and this is three quarters. Okay. So if I want to find what uh, the coordinates of P are, okay, P, the X coordinate is minus two. So the Y coordinate of P is when you put minus two inside this equation. I'm just going to answer it on this side of the page page really should go to the other side but just so I can see everything here so minus a half times minus two is minus one minus one plus three is two okay so that must be two here All right so that's minus two and two for P and for Q you got the the co x coordinate is three quarters so you have y equals a half times three quarters and then plus three that gives you um, three over eight plus three, you can write that as three and three eighths if you want. So Q is, is going to be uh, three quarters and three and three eighths. Okay, you can write that as 27 over eight if you want. Okay, so you have the value of P is minus two and two, and Q is three quarters and three and three eighths. And there we have the answer to part A. Okay, and I'll do part B on the next page. Okay. Okay, now for part B. Um, so we've worked out that P and Q coordinates are minus two, two, and three quarters and three and three eighths. And then it says, hence write down the range of values of X for which two X squared plus three X is greater than or equal to a half X plus three. Now this is something which is new in the syllabus of um, this P1 compared as compared to the old C12 and the old C12. It's where you have to find uh, where one, the range of values where a curve is um, above another or below another uh, line or curve. It's to do with inequalities um, and regions, which is something which, you know, you find in IGCSE, but it was something that wasn't in the old syllabus. Okay, so it's something quite new. So we've got to find where the curve, basically, which is this, y equals 2x squared plus 3x, is greater than the line a half x plus 3. So basically, where are the values of the curve above the values of the line? Okay, you can see that um, point P and Q, where they're both equal to each other, and th that would be the boundary of where one becomes bigger or smaller than the other. Okay, so let's just, just draw a little line there from there to there and from there to there. So we know that between minus two, at minus two and at three quarters is where P, the two curves, the line and the curve are equal to each other. Now you can see that the curve rises above the line, okay, which is what we want to see here, when this is greater than the line, when x is less than minus 2. In this region here, the curve is going to be above the line. Okay, when x is greater than minus 2, the curve is below the line. So this inequality will be false in this region here. Okay, and when you get to 3 quarters, when x is equal to 3 quarters, they're equal again. 
and when x is greater than three quarters the curve you can see is above the line if you choose a value over here for example you see that the curve has a higher value than the line okay and if you choose a value over here the curve has a higher value than the line but if you choose a value between minus two and three quarters the curve has a value which is less than the line so we can say that the answer to this part of the question is this is true when x is greater than or equal to minus two so x is less than or equal to minus two and when x is greater than or equal to three quarters this statement will be true so this is the range of values of x for which this statement is true okay there's the answer there okay so i hope that was clear in this question and question number three will be in the next video